Hello everyone, I'm Zach Allen from the YouTube channel, Zach Allen Productions. Today I'll be showing you how I created a sandworm scene inspired by Dune, using Blender and HitFilm. This tutorial focuses heavily on Blender, so make sure to check out FX Home's Blender to HitFilm Masterclass if you are new to the software. I'll also be using HitFilm Pro, but you can follow along in Express if you have the 3D Model Render add-on and the Composite Pro Keying add-on. Begin by opening Blender and deleting everything in the default scene. Add in a cylinder object and adjust the radius and depth to be the size of the sandworm. Rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. In edit mode, add many loop cuts to divide up the length of the model. Select all, then deselect every third loop of faces. Set the pivot point to individual origins, then increase the scale on the y-axis. Extrude the selection. Scale it up on X and Z, then scale down slightly on Y. This gives the model multiple segments, adding to the worm-like appearance. Select the front face of the model and inset it multiple times, moving it back each time to create the mouth of the sandworm. Extrude the interior back twice, then scale it up to add an interior inside the mouth. Control alt select the bottom vertical edge of the mouth to select the ring of edges. Then in the Select menu, choose Checker Deselect. Scale down on X and Z slightly, then deselect the top half of the selection, and scale down even more, with the pivot point set to the 3D cursor. Add a subdivision surface modifier, and give the object smooth shading. Back in edit mode, inset the interior mouth face to hide any pinching from the modifier. Add a new material and set the base color to be an image texture. I found that rock textures worked very well. In material preview mode, you should see the texture applied to the model. We don't want any texture on the interior of the mouth, so in edit mode, select the interior and assign a new black material to it with no reflectivity. The texture on our model is looking stretched, so go to the UV editing tab, Select all faces, then deselect the circular faces on each end of the model. Deselect and reselect a rectangular face to make it active. Then UV unwrap using the Follow Active Quads option. In the UV editor, set the pivot point to the 2D cursor. And in the UV menu, enable Constraint to Image Bounds. Move and scale the faces to fill the entire square. Disable the Constraint to Bounds option. Then scale up on the y-axis until the texture no longer appears stretched on the model. My image texture is seamless, so it will be tiled multiple times across the model with no visible seams. Back in the Layout tab, set the pivot point back to Median, and select the back circular face. Scale it on X and Z by half, and enable Proportional Editing. Set the size to be close to the length of your sandworm, and choose a falloff that looks good to you. Now the sandworm gets smaller closer to the tail. Scale the face down again with the smaller proportional editing falloff. And move it into place to create the desired tail shape. Now it is time to begin rigging the model so it can be animated. Add a new armature, and in the object's viewport display options, choose in front and display as wire to make it easier to see. In edit mode, Set the pivot point to individual origins. Rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis. Move the entire armature to the tail end of the sandworm. Then select the end point and move it to the front of the sandworm. Add 8 segments of bendy bones. Then subdivide the bone into enough segments to match those on the worm model. Move the joints to line up with the ridges. In the armature settings, Choose Display as B-Bone to show the segments we added. Use Ctrl-Alt-S to scale up the display size. Duplicate the first and middle bones and clear their parents and disconnect them. Scale up the display size, disable the Deform setting, and remove the bendy bone segments for each of them. Move them each forward just over one segment length and rename them. These separated bones will be controllers for the rig. Duplicate the middle controller and move it. Then parent the other two controllers as well as the tailbone to it. 
This bow now controls the transformations for the entire rig. Go into pose mode and add an inverse kinematics constraint to the front and middle connected bones. Target the corresponding controller bone, set chain length to 5, and enable rotation. Now the controller bones can be moved and rotated to control the sandworm's shape, instead of having to position each bone in the chain individually. I also want my sandworm to have the mouth animated to open and close slightly, so I'll have to rig that as well. Back in edit mode, duplicate the head target and scale it down. Move the points to position the bone in line with the sandworm's mouth as seen in wireframe view. Parent it to the head bone and rename it. Set the pivot point to the 3D cursor, and in front view, duplicate the bone and rotate it 90 degrees three times. Set the roll parameter to zero on each bone and rename them. Duplicate the head target again, then scale and move it so it is visible. Parent it to the head bone. This bone will be a controller for the mouth animation. In pose mode, add a locked track constraint to the upper mouth bone. Target the mouth target bone, then set it to track Z and lock X. Now when the target bone moves, the mouth bone rotates towards it. Move the target to realign the mouth bone with the geometry, then apply that position as the rest pose. Add the locked track constraint to the other mouth bones and repeat the process, choosing between X, negative X, Z, and negative Z to orient the bones correctly. Now that the rig is created, it is time to assign it to the sandworm geometry. In object mode, parent the worm object to the armature using the empty groups option. Select the worm object, go into weight paint mode, and open object data properties to view the vertex groups. Select the tail group, then in edit mode, enable ghost to see through the mesh. Deselect all, and box select the vertices of the tail segment. Hit assign and tab out of edit mode, you should now see the tail section highlighted in red, showing that those vertices are linked to the tailbone of the model. Continue the process of selecting the next vertex group, selecting the vertices, and assigning. For the mouth groups, disable ghost and go into front view. Use circle selection to select the front faces closest to each mouth bone. Make sure not to select any of the interior faces or any faces on the side of the worm, then assign. Now you can enter pose mode for the armature, and moving the rig will deform the sandworm mesh. I'll set up the approximate pose I'd like the sandworm to have for the final shot. Then select rest position in the armature settings to disable the pose for now. Next, we will create the sandworm's mouth. In edit mode of the worm object, select the middle ring of faces on the worm's mouth. Duplicate the faces and separate them into their own object. In edit mode of that object, scale the faces so they aren't visible through the worm. Because these faces were duplicated from our worm, they are still affected by the armature in the same way. Hide the sandworm objects for now and add in a bezier curve. Use the number pad delete key to zoom the viewport to frame the object. In edit mode, move the point so one starts at the origin, then move and rotate the points to create the desired tooth shape. Increase the bevel depth to add thickness to the curve. Add in another bezier curve and select it as the other curve's taper object. Edit the new curve so the geometry tapers off to a point. Frame the view on the mouth object and add a particle system. This will be used to instance the curve object hundreds of times across the surface of the mouth object. Set the start and end frames to zero, so the simulation completes before the shot begins. Increase the lifetime to something like 100,000, so the particles live much longer than our shot duration. 
Disable physics on the particles and choose Render as Object, selecting the Curve object. Increase the scale and scale random, then enable rotation. Set the axis to normal tangent and adjust the phase to orient the particles correctly. You can also add some variation by slightly increasing the randomized phase option. Increase the number of particles and adjust the seed if you want a slightly different look. Enable the options to hide the emitter in the viewport and in renders, so we only see the particles and not the surface they are created from. I chose to edit this mesh to change the angle of the particles, and to make the ones at the bottom look as if they were being pushed down a little by gravity. Make sure any changes to the mesh don't cause the emitter to stick out of the worm geometry, as the base of the teeth particles should always slightly intersect with the mouth surface. These particles are attached to the surface, so the animation rig will also affect them as expected. Sometimes making changes in the project will cause the particles to disappear. So if that happens, just disable and re-enable the particle system. Remove the materials from the mouth object and add a new one. Apply this material to the curve object as well, since that is where the material will actually show up in the render. Now that our sandworm is modeled and rigged, it is time to lay out the scene and set up the camera. To add some natural camera movement to the shot, Tom used FX Home's CamTrack AR app. This iPhone app allows you to capture footage and 3D camera motion at the same time, which you can then import into Blender, HitFilm, or After Effects. Make sure to check out the other tutorials on CamTrack AR to learn how to import the data into Blender. Now that the camera is imported, I'll shift the keyframes on the timeline so they start at frame 1. I wanted the shot to have a wide aspect ratio, so I changed the camera's resolution. We aren't using the video footage from CamTrack AR, so we are free to change the camera parameters as only the movement data is being used. I'll also change the focal length. Scrub through the timeline and choose a section of the motion that you like, and set that as the in and out points for the project. In pose mode of the worm, move the main control point to position the worm's face closer to ground level. The camera is parented to an anchor object, so move and rotate the anchor to get your desired shot. Add in a new object to represent the person standing in front of the sandworm, keeping the scale accurate. Make sure that the origin point of this object is at the bottom. Look through the camera and position this object where you want your actor to be. Disable this object from appearing in renders, as it is just for position reference. Time to give our sandworm a home. Add in a new plane object and increase the size to be the size of our visible desert. In edit mode, subdivide the plane, multiple times if necessary, to add more mesh detail. You circle select to grab the vertices around the body of the sandworm, and move them up with proportional editing enabled. Adjust the fall off using the scroll wheel to create what looks like a mound of sand around the worm. Shrink your selection using Ctrl and Number Pad Minus, and move it back down, decreasing the falloff so the mound appears to have a hollow center where the worm is. Add a subdivision surface modifier and enable smooth shading to smooth out the sand object. To create sand dunes, add a displace modifier and increase the strength. Create a new clouds texture for the displacement, and increase the size to create the dune shapes. This displacement will affect our mound though. So add a new vertex group. Assign a weight of 1 to the whole desert, and paint in a weight of 0 where the mound is. Select this group in the Displace modifier controls so it affects where the displacement appears. Repeat this displacement process again, this time with a much smaller displacement and a much smaller noise texture. Add a subdivision surface modifier to add more mesh detail to capture the smaller noise information. This will give the appearance of some sand being shifted around by both the sandworm and the person standing in front of it. Painting on this high resolution mesh will be quite slow, so I'd recommend disabling the subdivision surface modifier while painting. Finally, add a new material to this sand object and choose a sandy color.
You could add a sand texture for more realism, but the detail would be so small and not really show up in the render. With all the objects in the scene, I can now begin animating the sandworm. The animation is not very complicated, only requiring a few keyframes to give the sandworm a slow breathing motion. When animating the mouth, make sure to use the position Y parameter in the bone settings, ensuring that it is moving on its local Y axis. To make the sandworm look more realistic, we will have to edit the materials, so go into the shading tab. Before I work on the materials, I'll load in an HDRI to help light the scene. Make sure to enable Scene Lights and Scene World in the viewport shading settings. I'll also change the render engine to Cycles and choose to use my GPU as the rendering device. Select the worm object to edit the material. I chose to add a hue saturation node to lower the saturation and increase the brightness of the image texture. Duplicate the texture node and load in the roughness texture. Duplicate it again, this time loading in the displacement texture. Set the color space to non-color and add in a displacement node, connecting it to the displacement output. I chose to increase the scale and lower the mid-level, which will make more of the displacement stick out from the model instead of sticking in. Add a UV map node and a mapping node, plugging it into the vector of all the textures. This allows us to control the scale and positioning of the texture on the model. Duplicate the texture node again, this time loading in the normal map. Set it to non-color as well, and plug it into a normal map node. The normal texture is actually from a different texture set to add detail different from the other textures. I wanted this texture to be much smaller on the model, so I duplicated the mapping node and increased the scale, causing it to be tiled more times. To take advantage of both the normal map and displacement map, go into the material property settings and choose displacement and bump. Now in rendered view, you can see the large displacement detail and the finer normal map detail. Select the teeth to edit the material, then deselect to make it easier to see. Add an object info node and plug the random into a color ramp node. This will be the base color of the teeth, giving each tooth a random color from the ramp. I adjusted the ramp to have the desired colors, making it so that only a few of the teeth would have the brighter color. With the material set up, we can finalize the lighting. I chose to add a sunlight to produce a more noticeable shadow. Adjust the orientation of the light to change the angle of the shadow, then decrease the strength and increase the angle setting to make the shadow softer. I also decrease the strength of the HDRI to darken the scene. To change the rotation of the HDRI, add a texture coordinate node plugged into a mapping node. It's finally time to render. Enable transparent in the film settings and disable camera ray visibility for the world. This will make the HDRI not directly visible while still affecting the lighting. The background will now be transparent so we can replace the sky in hit film. Render an image to make sure everything is working and that nothing is showing in the render that shouldn't be there. I recommend setting the color depth to 16 to give some more color information for compositing. Choose an output folder, and finally, render the animation. Depending on your computer specs, this may take some time. When the render is finished, duplicate the sand object and apply the modifiers. Circle select the faces close to the person object we made, invert the selection, then delete the faces. This object will be exported and used as a shadow catcher in HitFilm. Export the scene to a HitFilm composite shot using the Blender to HitFilm script with the person object selected. This will bring our camera from Blender to HitFilm, along with a point to position our green screen footage in 3D space. Select the Shadow Catcher object and export it as an OBJ, making sure to enable selection only. Next, we have to prepare our video footage in HitFilm. Import the footage and make it into a composite shot. The video is filmed vertically, so reverse the comps width and height and rotate the footage 90 degrees. Duplicate the comp in the media panel. Open it, 
remove the footage, and drag in the previous comp instead. This is where we will do the green screen key. Duplicate the green key comp and rename it to Luma Key. Since the green screen doesn't cover the entire area behind Javert, we'll have to use a different method to isolate his legs from the background. Instead of rotoscoping frame by frame, we'll use a luminance key, since his dark clothing contrasts with the lighter background. Duplicate the comp one more time. This is where we will combine the two different keys to create a final black and white mat. Proceed to key out the green using the chroma key effect. I chose to add a chroma UV blur effect first to smooth out some blocky artifacts. Adjust the key so the area surrounding Javert is fully black, and the area inside him is white. In the Luma Key comp, add the Luminance Key effect to the footage and adjust the threshold. Set Tolerance to 0. To clean up the key, I added a Matte Cleaner effect and increased the Choke setting. Then added a Slight Blur effect. Drag the two comps into the Matte comp, and use Feathered Masks to control where each layer appears. Use additional masks to subtract any unwanted areas. To fill in any holes or missing areas, add a new white plane and mask it using the footage as a guide. Import the rendered image sequence from Blender and make it into a comp. Also import the composite shot file exported from Blender and copy in the camera and point. Drag in the Javert and Matt comps, make them 3D, and parent Matt to Javert. Set Javert's anchor point to be by his feet, then parent the layer to the point layer, and reset the position. Once in place, unparent the layer and delete the point. Hide the Matt layer from view. You can now adjust the scale so Javert is the right height. I'll increase the scale again for now to make color adjustment easier. Color correct the footage to match the brightness, contrast, and color of the render. Add a chroma key effect. This will not be used to key the footage, but to do the spill suppression. Set the color to have a value of 1 in the green channel to see the spill removal take effect. You can also slightly adjust the other color channels to alter the hue of the replacement to match the sand color. In the spill settings, source the render and increase the amount so the despilled areas take on some of the luminance of the background. Add a set matte effect sourcing the luminance of the matte layer. This will actually make the background of the footage transparent. Import the model exported from Blender. And disable the auto normalize scale and center anchor point options. Set the color to white and import it. Drag the model onto the timeline and disable illumination, keeping received shadows on. Enable cast shadows on the Javert layer and add in a new light layer with cast shadows enabled. Positioning the light will now cast a shadow onto the ground. Adjust the shadow settings on the light and set the layer's blend mode to multiply. I chose to use a curves effect to make the shadow more blue like the render, and to add a diffuse effect to soften it. Import an HDRI and add it to the timeline. Add a 360 viewer effect and adjust the rotation to see the desired sky. Add an Exposure Pro effect to dial in the sky brightness, and add any other color correction effects to change the color. To bring everything together and polish the shot, add a new grade layer. Using a color balance effect, I removed a lot of red from the image, making it more blue. I then added an Exposure Pro effect to darken the image and dial in the brightness and contrast, as well as reduce the saturation. Additional curves effects were used to tweak the color further.
A subtle radial blur and vignette effect help to soften and darken the image towards the edges and draw attention to the sharper and brighter center. And a subtle grain effect added to the realism by making it look more like recorded video footage. And that's how you can model, rig, animate, shade, light, render, and composite a Dune-inspired sandworm scene using Blender and HitFilm. Feel free to explore the project file provided in the video description and to leave a comment if you have any questions or if you learned something new. Subscribe for more HitFilm and Blender content and be sure to give this video a like. See you next time!